like, why can't I see? I need, because I need my glasses. Hello, everybody, and welcome to session 34 of the Little Wolf Knits podcast. My name is Brianna, and I am the dyer, designer, and human behind the Little Wolf Knits and this YouTube channel. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome. I hope you enjoy. And if you're returning from another session for another session, welcome back. It is Wednesday, March 20th. One day I'll check that before I start. And it is later in the afternoon because it is gray and gloomy and overcast outside. And I've kind of been dragging my feet all day waiting for the sun to come out. But it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. And I have some knitting and spinning and making to talk to you about. So I decided there's no time like the present. Present? Oh, goodness. Uh, so I decided that there's no time like now to get this video recorded and get it out to you. Um, so grab your knitting, grab your making, grab a beverage of your choice, perhaps a cocktail if you're watching this in the afternoon, and let's jump in. First, let's talk about what I'm wearing. I've shown what I'm wearing before, but I have not worn it yet on a podcast, and since it was so gray and gloomy, I decided this is the outfit I needed to change into when I got home from work. Oh, this is not, mm, this is gonna be hard for y'all to see, but I am wearing a pair of pants. These are my, okay, this is dangerous. These are my thick beachcomber flares, which are a DK weight fold over waistband, um, like yoga pants style. There's like a slight flare at the bottom of these and they are so cozy. Oh, and this is my, let's see if I can all <laughs> hold my leg up. Why don't I just do this? This is my, they don't know colorway. On my 420 base, you saw this while I was making them but they are super cozy and I love them so much. So that's what I'm wearing and I am looking for testers for these and the testing call is ready and out and the pattern will be going out hopefully this week. So if you're interested in testing for a DK weight pan, only one leg is required in the next, I think, 10 week timeline, which is a pretty loose timeline for a DK weight one leg. Uh, check out the link below or head over to my Instagram to get more information and check the link in my bio. Before we jump into what I've been making, what I've been working on, I will just share it is the last week for the Cozy Peaks and Cheeks Mal. Won't even do an admin section. Get your posts in if you've been working along with us. Make sure to use the hashtag and final prizes will be chosen next week i was gonna say this time next week but the end of next week so get your projects in i likely won't even be talking about it next week by the time this video ends up going up so last call to get your posts in for prizes on garments that you've been working on from december 31st i believe through march 31st that's the only housekeeping i have so let's get into what i finished because I finished something in a week. Oops. I did it again. And I finished a traveler cowl in a week. This time, it's for me. Um, I haven't seen it yet because I'm going to block it first, but um, I haven't seen this like on or held up. Y'all know I, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Um, this is my first ever skein of hand spun that I spun on a wheel and it is a cool, um, gradient of sorts. One ply was a like burgundy maroon 
And the other ply was four rotating colors that I, I um, broke in half and then spun and spun them in the same order. So look at this like melt. Oh, can you see it? Oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, and this is The Traveler Cow by Andrew Mowry. If you haven't seen this or heard of this pattern, you clearly haven't been watching my last few podcasts because I think I have had a finished cowl three podcasts in a row, three episodes in a row. This is my third one, and I can't stop making them. I did the same modifications that I did on my last one, um, which I talked about last podcast. I'm not going to talk about it again, but you could go check out that video. And I cannot wait to wear this while I was making it. Honestly, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it. I was thinking that perhaps I would give it away or save it as a gift. But now that I just held it up to my neck and saw it, I don't think this one is going anywhere. Taking off my Progress Keeper, I had a little s'more Progress Keeper from Sweet Cherry. And it was in my Black Pearl Magic bag. But this is going to go into a blocking bath tonight. So I'm just going to fold it up and leave it off to the side. And I ended up using a lot less yarn than I thought I would, perhaps, because I, it was a, a woolen spun. So I think I got more yardage than the gram she recommended. She said, I think, 150 grams. And I had 159 or something like that. And I still have about 39. I think this is just shy of 40 grams left. So I ended up making pretty much the adult large. Um, pretty much the adult large. I, I did like a little bit in between the first section where you create the sides. I did the adult small. But then this section in the middle, I went with the number of repeats for the large. And I still have so much yardage left. And look at this yarn. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I asked Michael if there was something he would like with this. And he said, it's too special. Keep it for yourself. Which is kind of rude because I was about to give it to him. So, I don't know. Hmm. Refresh is in here, so I'm gonna have to use that for something else. But who knows what this will become? Maybe a hat? I don't know how many, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but I'm gonna keep it safely somewhere and call that an FO. A cowl started and finished in one week. Technically, less than that. I think I started it on Thursday and I finished it. Last night, Tuesday night, but I didn't work on it on Monday. So, a few days of knitting, and I really got a lot of this done. Honestly, we drove back from Ohio on Sunday, and I had plans to work on something else, but I said, I'm just going to finish a few rows of this to get to the end of a repeat, and then I worked on this the entire car ride for six hours in pretty much finished it. <laughs> I got all the way to the last section um, in that time frame, which is pretty amazing. But I have to say that is the only FO I have for this week, which makes me a little bit sad because I thought I might be able to squeak out too, which I now realize is a ridiculous goal. So let's talk about what else I've been working on this past week. <music> My next and only knitting whip that I have um, going right now is something you've seen before. It's in my Tanny Casey bag, which is beautiful. And I have done a lot of work on it. A lot as in if I wasn't working on that cowl, this most certainly would have been finished. This is looking like a sweater, y'all. Um, so this is, I'm going to throw it on, my second half sweatshirt by me came out earlier this year, I believe in January, 
no, February. It came out in February. And this is my third one that I'm making for myself because I wear it so much. I knew I needed more. Okay, I'm layering this over now. A long sleeve turtleneck, which I don't normally do. But look at it. Look at Okay, it doesn't go with my pants, but look at it. It is so amazing. I am making um, a 44 inch bust, which gives me about 10 inches of positive ease. This progress keeper right here, this little brownie, is where I was last time you saw this. So I had worked the back panel and just worked the front panel to here. There was no neck band, there were no sleeves, there was no joining in the round. And since last week, I have done all of those things. Um, I believe I had just joined in the round. Maybe I think I was on the first round last week. I finished that skein. I'm not alternating skein, so I can see where they end and where the pooling switch is, but I don't know if you can. So I worked until about here when that skein was up. Then I picked up and did sleeve number one with ribbing. I did the neck band. And then I did sleeve number two with ribbing. All my ends are also woven in. Have I woven all of these in? Most of these are woven in, but I haven't blocked this yet. So they're just hanging out inside. And then I got to the point where honestly, I could have done, I tried it on and I said, I could have made this cropped. I had two skeins completely done. Oh yeah, so I did the sleeves and I had a little bit left. So I added like two inches to the body and it was probably around here, which is short. And I said, I could add two inches, three inches of ribbing and call it a super crop sweatshirt. And it probably would be this, the length it's at now, but I'm, I don't know. I think I'm glad I didn't. I think I'm glad. I wear my full length one so much more. Hmm. I'm liking this look though. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if I add ribbing now, it's gonna hit here, which is a weird length. It's not cropped and not long enough. So I think the plan is to add like two more inches onto the body and then two more inches of ribbing. So I have a full length sweatshirt. This is a colorway I cannot talk about yet. This is a colorway you all know and have seen before. This is um, cinnamon sugar. It seems like slightly more orange in person. Comes up quite yellow on camera, but it goes so, so well with this colorway that will be revealed in the next week or so. Um, it is a part of a new collection that's going to be coming the second week of April. But you're going to start to hear, let me see if I can do this, about the collection and see all the colorway reveals in the next week or so. So you won't need to wait too long to find out what it is. I will say I posted a reel about it and lots of people guessed. And some people even guessed it right. Not only the theme for this collection, but the exact colorway inspiration, which I was so shocked. I did not think anyone was going to get it because I don't know, it's like tans and neutrals, but that could be anything. Um, so if you haven't seen that reel yet, go check it out. Drop your guess in there. I'm giving away gift cards for people who have guessed it um, and see if you know which colorway guesses were correct or if you have a guess of your own and keep an eye on my Instagram like I said in the next week or so to find out what this colorway is and see the rest of the colorways for that collection. I only have one more whip and I have not done that much work on it. I'll be honest I was hoping to get more work done on this than I have, but I haven't. I've been busy with things like knitting and working and dyeing lots of yarn, but oh, 
I did get some work on it. Oh, wow. You can't even, you can barely even see it. And it is a spinning whip. This is my Arco Iris from Malabrigo Noob Superwash Merino. And remember, I took the four ounce braid and I broke it in half and then I decided to split it in half again. So this is one ounce. One ounce seems wrong. Seems like too much fiber for one ounce because I've already spun a lot of it. This is a quarter of that braid, I will say that, of fiber. And this will be one ply of a three ply that I've talked about last week and the week prior, so I'm not gonna talk about it again, but I'm spinning this quite fine to make sure that I can get a fingering or sport weight three ply out of this one. So those are my only whips. I'm not going to talk about project plans again because I talked about them last week and I still have two that need to get cast on and will be getting cast on in the next week. So you will get to see them next week. Um, and maybe we'll talk really briefly about acquisitions because I received something this week and I think you're going to love it. <music> So yesterday, Michael came in from the mailbox and said, hey, you have a package here. And I said, hmm, what is it? I don't know. I didn't order anything. He said, it's from Black Pearl Magic. I said, what are you talking about? Um, I have a fuzz in my mouth from the fiber. My friend Shayla of Black Pearl Magic, who I've talked about lots when I've shown her bags, and I were chatting several weeks ago and she had posted something on her stories and I was like, I love that, I need it, oh my gosh. And she sent me one. I feel like we've um, created a bit of a monster friendship where she comments on something, she's like, I love it and I just send it to her and now apparently vice versa. <laughs> so I'm like, I need to send her something now. So I feel like we're just gonna keep sending each other things back and forth, but Look what she sent me. I, I'm so glad. I mean, I love all of the color ones. They're all amazing. But if y'all know me, I feel like this is my palette. This clear iridescent white trim notions binder, I think is what she calls it. And it is see-through. It has all of these slots to put your needles in. And it has all... It's, it's a binder, so it's like a three ring binder. It has these binder rings and it comes with these pouches to put things in, like um, cables, stoppers, uh, and yeah, like end stoppers, stitch markers, tightening pins, uh, I don't know, any it, cable needles, any accessories really that you might want to throw in. And I think she threw in some colorful ones because she wasn't sure if I would like them. And the answer is yes, I do like them. I want them all in here. I don't know if they can all fit in here or if it will be like frowned upon and will be too much for my binder to handle. Um, in which case I will then need to decide whether I keep the colorful pouches in here or keep the clear ones in here or switch them out from time to time. But mm -mm, I am so excited. I cannot wait to use this. I almost set it up yesterday and I decided to wait and show it to y'all as I got it. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, and then you can see what it looks like once I fill it up. So exciting. I think I might have to fill this one tonight. That is the only thing I've acquired in the last week. And boy, does it fill me up. Can you all hear Michael downstairs playing this video game? 
I said, I have to record my podcast. You need to go downstairs and play video games. He was so confused. Okay, that is the only acquisition I've gotten. So let's just talk about things that are in the shop right now. We have a few things in the shop that I don't want you to miss out on in case you've been waiting. The Moana boxes and single skin countdown options are all available in the shop now. We have a 15 day or a 30 day countdown that's available in my Sunfish or my 420 base. Comes with some fun gifts to celebrate the summer and July and all the tropical weather we sometimes have depending on where you live. Sometimes it's just dreaming of tropical beach weather in July. Um, and there are options to add on a full skein with or without gifts and on any base. So technically you could, if you had a lot of trust in me, which would be scary, say, I wanna get five skeins of that yarn on your 420 base because I wanna make a sweater or a blanket and order yourself a sweater quantity of the Moana inspired yarn. It is called the Island Girl Collection and Set Countdown. So if you search that in my shop or check out the countdown kits section, of, I think it's countdown yarn, countdown kits section of my shop. It's also on my homepage. You can find it there and they will be up until they sell out or until May when I'll start dyeing them. So make sure to grab one if you want one. And the other things that are in my shop now, the pre-order for my pearlescent and desert bloom colorways that are part of the Cloudscape sweater scarf kits, um, either knit or crochet, um, that were dyed, exclusive colorways that were dyed and inspired by my friend Chantel of Knititude and Courtney of I Love Tinderbox. That pre-order opened two weeks ago, perhaps, um, two Fridays ago, and it is still open. I have started dying pre-orders and they will be going out the door by the end of this week or the beginning of next week. But what I'm doing is keeping pre-orders open and they're going to be getting dyed and shipped out on a rolling basis. So from now on, all of the orders that have been dyed so far should will be shipped and should arrive in time for the pattern releases on April 5th. You still, depending on where you live and how the post office is, might be able to get your yarn if you dye it, if you place an order for those two colorways this net over the weekend before the 24th and they should get dyed next week and go out again either by the end of that week or the beginning of the following week and get to you by or around the release date for those patterns. So they're still open. Make sure to grab those if you want. All of the yardage and skein recommendations for sizing for those two patterns are included in those two listings. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me or send an email to Courtney or Chantel and we should be able to help you figure some things out. The last thing that I wanted to share is a last call on our March clubs. Oh, it's getting so dark. I knew this was gonna happen. Well, we're doing our best. Um, our March clubs, last call before they get closed. Um, I will be dying them next week, so by our next session, you will no longer be able to order these. We have I Can't Get Started, which is this really fun, colorful, springy variegated inspired by Gilmore Girls. And we have Horseshoe Bend, which is this earthy, moody, neutral palette. I guess this is neutral. I would say earthy palette. Um, for our From the Open Road collection. And both of these yarns, like I said, will be available through next Monday or Tuesday. So if you definitely want one, make sure to grab one over the weekend by March 24th so you don't miss out. That is all that I have in the shop right now. I will, I'm gonna, I decided I'm going to wait for one more week. 
Okay, maybe I'll tell you a little bit. I want to, oh, it sounds so bad at keeping secrets. I want to talk about the collection, the new collection that I have coming. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but I will say this. It is food inspired. Some people have guessed it already on that reel I posted. And it might be food that you eat in the morning. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to share more information about it next week. If you have your guesses on what you think this collection theme is, drop them below. We'll see if anyone guesses correctly. Last thing, let's just talk about life. Yeah, let's talk about life. It is getting darker by the minute here. So I'll be quick here. Um, I think I recorded last Tuesday, right? Does that sound right? So since last Tuesday, Michael and I, we decided for date night to stay and watch a movie at home. There was nothing we super wanted to see in the theaters at a good time for us to see it. So we decided to tap into our list of movies that we have by the hundreds. And we watched Onward, which is a Disney Pixar movie and I had only seen it one time before. Oh man, it crushed us. We were sad in the best way possible. Um, it is a really sweet, fun, sad, heartwarming, heartbreaking movie. Um, if you have siblings, I think this one really hits. If you've lost a parent, I think this one can really hit. If you've lost anyone, honestly, that you care about, it's a really good movie. If you haven't seen Onward, definitely check it out. Then the rest of the week, we watch Game of Thrones. We honestly haven't watched Game of Thrones in a while, so maybe we need to do that. Um, and then we headed to Ohio for the weekend. I shared that last time. We headed to Ohio. I got lots of knitting done. Um, it was really fun. We got to spend a lot of time with Michael's family, with his sister and his nieces, and we saw all of his friends on Saturday. They came over and we had like dinner and hung out. Some people were outside. It was a little cold for me, so I was inside. Um, but that was really cool to see everyone. We don't get to see them that often. Um, and we probably won't see them again until July when we have a wedding with this friend group. So it was just nice to be able to see everyone, um, a few new babies that have been born, a few people who are pregnant. So that was just a nice time and I'm glad we got to do it. Then on Sunday, we got to do a family day and hang out with Michael's mom and dad and sister and brother-in-law and nieces and grandma and uncle and have dinner for St. Patty's Day. I say dinner, we ate at like two o'clock or three o'clock for St. Patty's Day. And then we made the long truck back it was rough. Michael and I did some listening to a podcast. We listened to season one of Counter Clock. Um, I listened to Crime Junkies and they were talking about it a lot. And I was like, let's, I, I had listened to another season of Counter Clock um, based on an episode I had listened to. And I was like, why don't we go back and listen to a season of, of a true crime documentary podcast? And he was like, okay, that sounds good. So we listened to a little bit of that. We didn't finish it. So maybe we'll finish it this weekend. Um, and then Monday was a crazy hectic day. Our phones got hacked. We got scammed. Um, they shut our phone service down. I had to go to Verizon. I was dealing with it for half an hour or so. We had no phones and my whole family was trying to communicate across state lines without cell phones. It was very difficult. Um, thank God for Wi-Fi and Instagram for making that happen. Otherwise, I guess we would have emailed or been very confused about what was going on but it is all fixed I have a new phone I have a Galaxy S24 um, with no case on it because I ordered a case and I wasn't totally planning to get a new phone on Monday but here we are so hopefully a case comes soon it's super cute I, I'll be excited to show it to you and then Monday night what do we do on Monday night um 
we just hung out, relaxed, and on Tuesday, uh, we again decided there weren't any movies we were super excited to see, so we decided to watch a movie at home. And Michael, it was Michael's choice, and he chose All is Quiet on the Western Front, um, which is a really interesting movie. So I'm like not a super big history buff, and I am pretty anti-war in general. Um, but there's something about war movies I really appreciate. I think they feel really tragic and almost unbelievable. Like, just to put myself in the shoes of what someone in our, not even our service, just someone in the armed service or someone in the war, someone being impacted so directly by a war is really tragic i think that's like the word that keeps coming to mind it's not sad it's tragic and seeing how it can impact people's lives like that i also think there's something about like brotherhood loyalty that like is a theme in those kinds of movies that i appreciate um it just feels so foreign and fascinating to me i think because i'm so unfamiliar with it but this was a movie, actually, and we watched a dubbed version. I believe the original is in German. Um, and maybe we could have found it with sub subtitles, but the, we watched it on Netflix and it was dubbed. Which I didn't really mind because I was knitting. Um, but it's actually the story of one young soldier. Maybe 18 or 19 years old. Um and his friends, but mainly follows this one soldier who are recruited into the German army three years into World War One, which was basically when tens of thousands of German soldiers were dying by the weeks. And they were, they were still recruiting people. It was just really tragic to see these young boys who were like, excited and enthusiastic and believing propaganda of their country and thinking they were doing the right thing and to go out there and be so totally taken aback and take blindsided about how things really were going and see the tragedy of war it was heavy um it was sad it was tragic it was two and a half hours, so I was also really tired by the end of it. Um, so I don't know that I would recommend it, I guess, unless it sounds like your thing. But that's what we did. And tonight I have a wolf pack Zoom with my membership. I'm super excited to just have a little knit night. And maybe we'll even watch some Game of Thrones after that because I've been missing it. And I have some knitting to do. My goal is to finish this. The body at least tonight and get to the ribbing if not start on the ribbing and then maybe tomorrow cast on a new project but I guess we'll see next week what I get done I'm gonna sign off before it gets totally dark in here and I will chat with you later until next time take care of each other